Hi. Hi everyone. So have we not gone live as yet? Let me try again. Okay, yes. Now, we are live now. So hi Dr. Sonar Parihar. I am Dr. Sonar Parihar. Good morning everyone. Who is watching me now? So we have two people waiting, but I think we have already started. So now we can start with the MCQs, right? Today's topic is what? Today's topic is antepartum hemorrhage, i.e., yani mainly placenta previa and abruptus placenta, which is going to be lecture today evening. Mein hone wala hai. Free class, hai, special class hai on An Academy special class platform. All right? So there was a lag in my mobile. Now I can see that I'm live, and uh, lag is still going on. All right. So. आप लोग मुझे जानते हैं आई एम ए कंसल्टेंट गायनेकोलॉजिस्ट इन जोधपुर राजस्थान और मेरा खुद का प्राइवेट हॉस्पिटल है एंड आई एम अ यूट्यूबर मेरे दो चैनल हैं आज के और गायनेकोलॉजिस्ट और दूसरा चैनल कौन सा है डॉक्टर सोनस ट्यूटोरियल जिसमें कि कल ही मैंने एक वीडियो डाला है अबाउट अन अकेडमी और आज एक और वीडियो डाला, डाला है अबाउट डाउन सिंड्रोम उसको जरूर देखना दैट इज़ अ लाइव वीडियो जो कि हमारे यहाँ एक बच्चा पैदा हुआ था सो जस्ट टू लेट यू नो दैट इस तरह से बच्चा दिखता है ठीक है सो अन अकेडमी में अगर आपको सब्सक्राइब करना है तो तरह तरह के सब्सक्रिप्शन है जो कि मैं हर बार वीडियो में बताती हूँ डॉक्टर सोनल इज माई कोड जिससे कि आपको टेन परसेंट डिस्काउंट मिलेगा राइट right? और अगर आपको आइकॉनिक लेना है यानी कि आपको प्रेप लैडर और अन अकेडमी दोनों साथ में लेने हैं तो ऑफकोर्स अगर आप कंबाइन लेंगे तो सस्ता पड़ेगा अलग अलग अन अकेडमी अलग अलग प्रेप लैडर लेने से आपको ऑलमोस्ट डबल कॉस्ट पड़ जाता है बट दोनों को साथ में लेंगे तो कुछ कॉस्ट कम हो जाता है ठीक है तो उसमें भी आपको टेन डिस्काउंट मिलेगा अगर आप मेरा कोड यूज़ करते हैं डॉक्टर सोनल ठीक है देन प्रीवियस ईयर तीन साल के क्वेश्चन पेपर्स ये रिलीज हो चुके हैं आप इसको जरूर अवेल करें आप इनके हेल्पलाइन नंबर पर कॉल करें एटी फाइव एटी 85, 85 क्योंकि आपको अगर प्रीवियस ईयर्स के क्वेश्चंस बैंक्स मिल जाएंगे तो ये बहुत इजी रहेगा तीन साल से ज़्यादा पीछे मत जाओ बिकॉज एग्जाम का पैटर्न चेंज होता रहता है पूरे टाइम ठीक है देन लाइट सब्सक्रिप्शन बहुत से बच्चों ने लिया है मेरे कहने से बिकॉज इट इज़ ओनली 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 एम सी क्यूज ओनली क्वेश्चन यही चाहिए आपको अभी और सारे नाइनटीन सब्जेक्ट्स हैं इसमें और बहुत सस्ता है टू का वैसे है और टेन डिस्काउंट के बाद और कम हो जाएगा तो अगर आप मेरा कोड यूज़ करके इसको खरीदेंगे तो आपको एंड टाइम पर जितने एम की प्रैक्टिस चाहिए वो सब ठीक है ना तो आपको इस समय नोट्स नहीं सिर्फ यही चाहिए एमबीबीएस प्रॉफ वन इज एनाटॉमी फिजियो एंड बायोकेम ये एमबीबीएस के जो छोटे छोटे हमारे बच्चे हैं जो अभी जस्ट एंटर कर रहे हैं मेडिकल कॉलेज उनके प्रॉफ वन के लिए मॉड्यूल लॉन्च हो चुका है हेल्पलाइन नंबर पे कॉल करो डाउट क्लेरिफिकेशन सीरीज स्टार्ट हो चुकी है सिक्स अप्रैल से प्लस प्लेटफॉर्म पे है विच इज अ पेड प्लेटफॉर्म अगर आप इसको सर्च करेंगे ऑनलाइन आप अन के लर्नर्स ऐप पर जाके देखो इसका क्या रेट चल रहा है दो महीने का सब्सक्रिप्शन है तीन महीने का है छः महीने का है तो छोटे छोटे सब्सक्रिप्शन है टेन परसेंट डिस्काउंट मिलेगा मेरा कोड यूज़ करने से विच यू नो व्हाट इज़ माय कोड दैट इज़ डॉक्टर सोनल आप इसको अवेल करो और ये सब स्टार्ट हो चुका है मेरी प्लस क्लासेस हो चुकी हैं दो आ, दिन तक हमने लगातार पढ़ा था पढ़ा था चार चार घंटे और अभी बीस तारीख से वापस मैं आपको सिर्फ सिर्फ एम कराने वाली हूँ तो अगर आप प्लस क्लास के लिए एनरोल करते हो तो बीस तारीख से लेके ट्वेंटी थर्ड ऑफ अप्रैल तक मेरी लगातार एम सी क्यू क्लासेज हैं जो कि सुबह आठ से दस बजे होंगी और सुबह सुबह हम एम सी क्यूज़ कर लेंगे दो घंटे रोज तो रोज हम ऑलमोस्ट ढाई सौ तीन सौ क्वेश्चन कर सकते हैं ठीक है तो हम अच्छा खासा कवर कप कर सकते हैं दीज आर द टॉपर्स फ्रॉम लास्ट ईयर ऑफ एफ एम जी बैच और होपफुली इस साल आप लोगों का नाम इसमें होगा जो हम स्पेशल क्लास लेते हैं दैट इज़ अ फ्री क्लास जो कि डेली होती है आज भी है सात से सात बजे से पौने आठ बजे फोर्टी फाइव मिनट्स की क्लास होती है वेरी इंटरेक्टिव क्लास इसमें आप लिख कर पूछ सकते हो या फिर आप हैंड रेज करके मुझसे बात कर सकते हो ऑडियो में ठीक है और इसको आप कभी भी कहीं भी देख सकते हो ऐसा नहीं कि लाइव मिस हो गया तो वापस नहीं देख सकते अगर आपने एनरोल किया है तो डॉक्टर सोनल का कोड डालते अनलॉक हो जाएगी ठीक है देन दिस इज द बैच दैट आई वॉज टॉकिंग वॉट मैराथन बैच है डेढ़ महीना डेढ़ महीने का बैच है अब आप लोगों का एग्जाम ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट मे को है तो पंद्रह मई तक हम लोग सारे ट्यूटर्स मिलकर आपको क्रैश कोर्स करा रहे हैं आप इसको अवेल करो इट इज़ वेरी गुड एंड टाइम पे खुद अगर पढ़ाई नहीं हो रही तो हमसे हेल्प ले लो हम लोग फटाफट आपको क्रैश कोर्स कराएंगे टू मंथ्स का बैच बना एफ एम जी का जिसमें अगेन आपके सारे ट्यूटर्स लगे हुए हैं टेलीग्राम चैनल पर भी हम बता रहे हैं आपको और अन अकेडमी के स्पेशल ऐप पर जो कि फ्री है उस पर बता रहे हैं प्लस क्लास में भी बता रहे हैं सारे नोट्स सारे पी डी एफ ऑल द निमोनिक्स ऑल द एम सी क्यूज ये डेढ़ महीने दो महीने का बैच है आप इसको अवेल करो ठीक है 
ये टेस्ट कल हो चुका है सुबह नौ बजे संडे को हम लोग नॉर्मली इस तरह के ग्रैंड टेस्ट करते हैं नॉट एवरी संडे एवरी फोर्थ नाइट या भी एवरी सेकेंड संडे तो ये हो चुका है होपफुली आप लोगों ने इसको अटेंड किया होगा कमिंग टू द एम सी क्यूज नाउ आई कैन सी इलेवन पीपल वॉचिंग नाउ लेट एस स्टार्ट विद एम सी क्यूज हाई स्वराज गुड मॉर्निंग सो वॉट इज द आंसर ऑफ दिस फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन ऑल ऑफ द फॉलोइंग आर ट्रू ऑफ प्लस एंटर प्रीविया एक्सेप्ट कौन सी चीज इसमें ट्रू नहीं है फॉर प्लस एंटर प्रीविया सो यू बी केयरफुल अबाउट दिस एक्सेप्ट पोस्टमार्टम हेमरेज इज इनफ्रीक्वेंट फर्स्ट ट्राइमेस्टर ब्लीडिंग इज अनकॉमन प्री मेच्योर लेबर इज कॉमन हायर इंसिडेंस इन वीमेन विद लोअर सेगमेंट सीजर इन सेक्शन मैल पोजिशन एंड मैल प्रेजेंटेशन आर कॉमन तो इसमें से कौन सी चीजें हैं एक या दो कौन से पॉइंट हैं जो कि प्लस एंटर प्रीविया के लिए सही नहीं है ठीक है गुड मॉर्निंग स्वराज ना गुड मॉर्निंग स्वराज स्वराज सुमन एंड स्वराज रावल ओके सो लेट्स हैव योर आंसर्स प्लस एंटर प्रीवी के लिए कौन से पॉइंट्स सही नहीं है सो वी गेट ओनली हाफ एन आवर ऑन यूट्यूब एंड फोर्टी फाइव मिनट्स ऑन द स्पेशल क्लास और मुझे लगता है टॉपिक बड़ा है तो मैं दो दो क्लास ले लेती हूँ कई बार फोर्टी फाइव मिनट्स की दो क्लास हो जाती है कल हमने दो इनफर्टिलिटी की क्लासेस करी थी आज हम इसको क्विकली फोर्टी फाइव मिनट्स में खत्म करेंगे बिकॉज अब आप थ्योरी पूरी पढ़ चुके हैं वी विल कॉन्सेंट्रेट ओनली ऑन द एम सी क्यूज ठीक है Okay, no answers. You want to answer this? All of the following are true about placenta previa, except nobody wants to answer, or is it very difficult for you? Premature labor common hai? Yes, it is common. So, ये सही है. Higher incidence in women with lower segment cesarean section? Yes. जितना lower segment cesarean section होगा, उतना scarring होगा, उतना placenta previa बनेगा. Okay, so Rajna, A according to you is wrong, which is right. postpartum hemorrhage is not infrequent it is actually frequent pph kyu hota hai placenta previa mein because the lower segment cannot contract as good as the upper segment the retraction of the lower segment is not as good because it is coming from the isthmus to so, wa muscular arrangement is not good so postpartum hemorrhage is not infrequent and this one more answer that is first trimester bleeding is not uncommon okay now this is actually it should be first trimester bleeding is uncommon because first trimester bleeding placenta previa mein hoti hi nahi hai so not uncommon is making it wrong theek hai placenta previa mein it is always after 28 weeks right because that is when we diagnose it is placenta previa then 29 year old now you have to highlight all the main main points she is a gravida 3 she is 29 she is at 34 weeks she is involved in a serious car accident okay in which she lost consciousness briefly in the emergency department she is awake alert complaints of severe headache intense abdominal pain intense abdominal pain and pelvic pain okay these are the points blood pressure is high heart rate is high Where is my cursor again? Heart rate is high. Temperature is just little high. Respiratory rate is also high. Fetal heart is normal. Physical examination reveals sev several minor bruises on the abdominal limbs. Vaginal inspection reveals blood in the vault. Okay. Strong frequent contractions. Very very important. All the uh, points are important. Are palpable. Which of the following is most likely a complication of this patient's present condition? So what do you think? Good morning, Akshay. What do you think is the answer here? What is she likely to suffer from? Pregnant lady at 34 weeks, fetal heart is not going down, but her own condition, blood pressure is high, pulse is high, respiration is high. There is blood in the vault. You can see blood in the vagina, and you can also feel the contractions, high, full contractions. So, what do you think is the condition she is suffering from? First of all. what is the condition that she is suffering from right now and what are the options given to you the complication of that condition akshay according to you it is iugr are you writing question number 2 where is the option a b c d surajna so, it is c what is subarachnoid hemorrhage subarachnoid hemorrhage is what it is hemorrhage here in the brain sub arachnoid means the arachnoid mater the pia mater and the dura mater so do you think she is suffering from a brain hemorrhage mansi surajna no bachcho 
think about it what are we left with <laughs> it's dic it's dic it's dic why dic first of all this is a case of abruption okay she has suffered a blunt trauma right and the trauma has uh, induced a high blood pressure which is again a, a precursor for abruption so she has undergone abruption okay abruption itna jyada nahi hai ki bachche ko problem ho bachcha abhi bhi fetal heart sahi chal raha hai because probably minor abruption tha uska pulse high ho gaya because she is bleeding inside टेम्परेचर स्लाइटली हाई हो ही जाता है रेस्पिरेशन थोड़ा हाई हो जाता है बट शी हैज ब्लड देयर इन द वॉल्ट अब अगर ब्लड आ रहा है वॉल्ट में एंड मोर ओवर वाई इज द टेम्परेचर एंड पल्स राइजिंग एब्रप्शन अगर इतना ज्यादा हो गया है कि पेशेंट की कंडीशन में फर्क पड़ रहा है दैट मीन्स द ओनली कंडीशन दैट शी इज सफरिंग फ्रॉम राइट नाउ इज डी आई सी दर इज कंजम्पन को एगुलोपैथी गोइंग ऑन दैट इज वाई दर इज ब्लीडिंग इन द विजानल वॉल्ट यू कैन सी एंड स्ट्रॉन्ग कॉन्ट्रेक्शन है विच आर वेरी पैथोगनोमोनिक ऑफ एब्रप्शन ठीक है so that is the condition here right subarachnoid hemorrhage is hemorrhage in the brain iugr there is no indication vasa previa agar hoga to bacche ki heart rate bahut low hogi vasa previa is it has 60 70% mortality of the fetus you have to quickly remove the fetus from the uh, abdomen because uh, basically the fetus is bleeding inside yahan par aisa kuch nahi hai theek hai now again 27 year old gravida 2 थर्टी फोर वीक्स अगेन एमरजेंसी डिपार्टमेंट मोटर वेहीकल कोलिजन इन द ट्रामा बे दैट मीन्स इन द ट्रामा डिपार्टमेंट हर हार्ट रेट इज अगेन हाई ब्लड प्रेशर इज हाई शी इज अलर्ट एंड ओरिएंटेड शी कंप्लेन ऑफ अगेन सिवियर एबडोमिनल पेन दैट बिगैन इमीजिएटली आफ्टर कोलिजन फिजिकल एग्जामिनेशन रिवील्स ब्रूजिंग ओवर द एबडोमन दैट इज फाइन बिकॉज शी हैड इंजरी अलॉन्ग विद हाइपर टोनस वेर इज माई पेन अलॉन्ग विद हाइपर टोनस यूट्रस अगेन शी हैज कॉन्ट्रेक्शन डार्क विजानल ब्लीडिंग सो सिमिलर केस ऑलमोस्ट सिमिलर केस वॉट इज डिफरेंट नाउ दे हैव in your sonography picture that it reveals placental abruption usme nahi tha theek hai fetal heart rate tracing decelerations dikha rahi hai some decelerations they have not specified late hai ki early hai emergency department mein iska uh, inr kiya that is a international uh, ratio the normalized ratio which is 2.5 with elevated fdp is very very clear now which of the following is the most appropriate first step in management first of all what is the diagnosis question number 3 we know the diagnosis this is abruption because that has been diagnosed and she is undergoing what dic we know it is dic okay because she has raised fdps and the international inr ratio is 2.5 all right so what should be the first line of treatment for this patient okay question number 3 so rajna you have answered anybody else administer a tocolytic because she is having contractions administer corticosteroid at 34 weeks no at 34 weeks it is not required deliver the fetus immediately by cesarean if the patient is in dic will you do a cesarean immediately unless the baby is actually compromised no the baby is not really compromised observe closely no don't observe give her fresh frozen plasma that is the answer okay deliver the fetus immediately by lscs we will discuss in the evening lscs is not the dictum for abruption especially if she is going for dic you have to see whether actually lscs is going to benefit or not sometimes the patient might come in labor herself and she might dilate quickly so, agar sab parameters theek hai bleeding bhi control ho gayi hai you have done an arm she is dilated then you can go for a normal delivery why to unnecessarily bring more morbidity to the uh, mother by doing a cesarean okay unless it is an emergency dire emergency that the baby is going to die right so isme administer fresh frozen plasma is the answer then which of the following is true about vasa previa vasa vasa previa what is the incidence mortality rate of 20% associated with low light placenta cesarean section is indicated we recently had a case of vasa previa and we could not understand what happened we did simply an arm it was not a low light placenta it was a normal placenta i did an arm and the blood would not stop and i thought maybe okay there may be some cervical trauma some little bit of rupture from the vessels but it would just not stop it was completely blood stain like and the fetal had dropped from 120 130 to suddenly 60 thankfully there was anesthetist in the uh, hospital there was some other co- case going on quickly i diagnosed on uh, ultrasound that the fetal heart is really down because sometimes we cannot make out whether actually the fetal heart suddenly came down so much and we quickly did a cesarean the baby was absolutely white she lost so much blood within a couple of 10 15 minutes but luckily we were able to save the baby by blood transfusion and uh, she was absolutely fine okay so that is a very very dangerous condition so except they are asking what is the condition what is the point which is not going in favor of vasa previa that is 
Ma'am, brisk bleeding and abruption should we not go for cesarean? Not necessarily depending on whether the patient is dilated, whether the patient is actually showing fetal deceleration, the baby is about to die. Generally, yes, it happens that in abruption, if there is brisk bleeding and you cannot think of anything, just do a cesarean. But then you have to see that the FDPs are not raised, the patient is uh, not compromised and if she is in labor, theoretically if she is in labor and the bleeding can be controlled by doing artificial rupture of membranes, then you should go for a normal delivery theoretically but it all depends ki aap kis condition mein baithe hain aur aapko kya lag raha hai bacche ki delivery mein kitna time lagega ctg monitoring kar pa rahe ho ki nahi patient ki condition kya hai generally the low threshold is for cesarean only yes but technically theoretically with the flow chart you go with the flow chart depending upon what condition they have given you in the case okay I saw this case in your internship. Okay, so Rajna, that's good. So, my uh, 25 years ke experience was the first case. I saw it in my residency mein dekha when I was doing my residency between 97 to 99. Uh, previa nahi dekha. Aur ye abhi recently, I saw it in my previous day. Recently, I saw it in my hospital. And I was the one who was rupturing the membrane, ARM. Karne ke baad, and thankfully, everything was available. We were able to save the baby. Okay? So what is the answer here? The mortality rate is 20% which is wrong. The mortality rate is almost 60 to 70%. Because itna sudden blood loss hota hai bachche ka and bachche mein kitna blood hota hai. So bachche cannot survive unless you quickly do a cesarean and you are good in your diagnosis and the pediatrician is available to do a blood transfusion. Okay. Right. 29 year old G3P2 female at 32 weeks of gestation presents to the emergency department with a small amount of vaginal bleeding. So, very small amount of bleeding. 32 weeks hai. She doesn't have any pain. Pain vein kuch nahi hai. Thik hai? Pulse rate normal. BP on the lower side but still normal and respiration also normal. So, patient compromise nahi hai. Her gestation is 32 weeks and very little amount of bleeding. Fetal heart agar tracing kar rahe hai, to usme fetal distress dekh rahe hai. Okay, the only complaint here is fetal distress. Complaint yani ki only positive finding and it is late deceleration. So, what is the best course of action now? What will you do? Yes, Surajna, you have to run like anything for the OTS. And you were an intern, so you must have understood what uh, distress the obstetricians go through. So they have to save the mother and the baby as well. So it's two people, two in one. Okay. So question number five, tell me the answer, guys. What will you do now at 32 weeks? Fetal heart is showing decelerations. Everything else is normal. Bleeding is very little. What will you do? Emergency cesarean, fetal umbilical blood transfusion, expectant management. Expectant means you manage accordingly. You don't probably run for OT. That is what expectant management is. And induction of labor with prostaglandins. Very simple answer because that is very clear. What will you do in this particular case? So I really like these cases, the way they are uh, mixing everything and uh, getting the right answer from you. Swaraj, okay. Anybody else? That is the answer. Emergency cesarean section. Yes, because the fetus is showing late decelerations. If late decelerations nahi hote, then you would have given a steroid dose because she's the baby is only 32 weeks. So then you steroid dose dete and then you could have waited for a couple of days if bleeding is uh, bleeding jada nahi hai and the patient and the bacha is stable. Investigation of choice to detect abnormally located placenta. Tell me. We will discuss this in the evening. But you have to tell me what is the investigation of choice for placenta previa. They are asking about placenta previa. Okay, uske liye kya hai? Investigation of choice. Question number six. Kindly write the number of the question, please. Ma'am, is it going to IUGR? Uh... So, Rajana, it will be more of a preterm baby rather than an IUGR because they haven't mentioned as such that she had any growth problems with the baby. But at 32 weeks, obviously, it will be a preterm baby and will need support in the NICU because you did not have time to give even steroid. Sometimes we give a stat dose of steroid of 12 milligram. Normally, what is the dose? 12 milligram, 12 hours apart or 24 hours apart. So, when we are going for an emergency cesarean, we will uh, give a 12 milligram shot of uh, uh, steroid so that whatever time the 10-15 minutes or half an hour that is going in preparing for the OT and getting the baby out within those 15-20 uh, minutes the baby can benefit from this steroid dose and the pediatrician will have to struggle less with the surfactant and with the lung maturity that the baby is not having. 
all right so question number 6 is a yes that is the answer it is tvs and some people will think why tvs it's a placenta previa because you are not putting your probe inside the cervix you are not basically putting your finger inside it is just a transvaginal probe which is going to stay here it is not going to go inside the cervix and damage the placenta or uh, disturb the placenta and cause bleeding so the probe is here and tvs is the right thing that is the investigation of choice because trans abdominal mein agar posterior ball placenta hai it is very difficult sometimes to diagnose okay and with the with the fetal fetus growing so big and with the maternal bleeding and sometimes contraction set in the mother is fat so many things they obliterate the view in trans abdominal sonography 28 weeks on sonography tvs a g2p1 female was de detected as having a major placenta previa major means it is either grade 3 or grade 4 okay a confirmatory scan should be performed at when now she had a scan at 28 weeks right i will tell you in the evening that at 20 weeks 95% patients will have a low lying placenta out of which almost 90% will have a upper segment placenta uh, when we do it at 32 weeks okay 32 36 weeks tak sara placenta upar chala jata hai but this one at 28 weeks is showing a major placenta previa to ab repeat scan kab karenge when will you do a repeat scan question number 7 because now you have to plan with this major placenta previa is going to disturb the uh, the uh, anatomy the mal presentations and this is going to uh, bleed very frequently because it is a major one even little bit of uh, disturbance in the cervical mucus even little bit of dilatation uh, anything any activity can provoke bleeding so what will you do now okay so we have three answers four answers everybody is saying 34 weeks but in your books it is 32 weeks so it's a major placenta previa then you wait till you uh, do another scan within a month within a month because um, uh, after one month you have to check whether it is actually going up if it is not going up it is very unlikely that it is going it is going to become a minor placenta previa previa from major okay 28 weeks ke baad thoda bahut uterus grow karta hai 32 weeks tak you have to check that it is still there then you have to plan that patient might be uh, given a bed rest till 34 weeks so that you can plan a delivery because you don't want her to end up in a pool of blood and come at midnight when the facilities are less so you are going to plan at 32 weeks that i am going to operate on you at 34 weeks when the baby is mature or you can even plan giving her a beta methazone dose that is a steroid dose so that even if she starts bleeding at 32 or 33 weeks you are done with your two doses of steroid so that the baby comes out mature the lung maturity is enough okay most common cause of aph question number 8 what is the most common cause let me tell you the percentage once you answer this most common cause of aph okay placenta previa anyone else again a okay it's actually abruptio abruptio placenta so if i tell you the percentage this is 1 in 200 this is 1 in 400 deliveries 300 to 400 so that is slightly uncommon as compared to abruption vasa previa is 1 in 1500 according to your mcq but it is generally in your books it is 1 in 2000 so quite rare accreta is 1 in 500 okay so this is the most common one abruption because abruption can be concealed it can be retroplacental hematoma it can be uh, a proper reve revealed abruption we will read this in the evening what are the different types of abruptions so silent abruptions can happen and sometimes these are just retrospective diagnosis when you do a cesarean or you do a delivery then you realize okay there was an abruption going on inside that probably led to these decelerations okay so this is something which is probably undiagnosed many times so the incidence is retrospective so it is more than placenta previa rani g2p1 presents to labor room in labor at 34 weeks she is in labor at 34 weeks pregnancy with dilatation of the cervix that is 3 cm minimal uterine contractions arm may you can see fresh bleeding late decelerations okay very much like the case that i discussed lscs was done fetus could not be saved no abruption no placenta previa what was the likely diagnosis very simple question very very simple question question number 
okay yes it is vasa previa very very simple now if i ask you in the previous question that at major placenta previa at 28 weeks if you it if it was not a major placenta previa it was a minor placenta previa at 28 weeks when will you repeat the sonography at that time you can say 34 or 36 weeks 36 weeks should be okay unless she had a bleeding episode before that 36 weeks you can plan that okay it's a minor placenta previa now you can check that the baby's head or the placent the presenting part is coming down and you can even check the relation of the presenting part with the the lowest uh, margin of the placenta so it is only 36 weeks for minor when there is no bleeding in between but if it's a major then you do it at 32 weeks okay and you plan okay how many more minutes are left we have 4 or 5 minutes amniotic fluid embolism can cause what question number 10 what can it cause amniotic fluid embolism how many cases have you seen so far i have seen one in my residency and two in my private practice and uh, unfortunately none of the patients could be saved one uh, to died on spot and the other one she had a kind of a paralytic attack because of involvement of the cerebellum and she survived for 6 to 8 months but she was like a vegetable and then she died so that is a very very lethal condition very very lethal it's very difficult to explain also to the patients what happened and uh, it's unfortunate that we don't have anything that we can predict that this is going to happen so what can happen in amniotic fluid embolism or yes it is all dic shock and bleeding tendency okay an elderly multi para with iud was admitted with strong labor pain so the baby is dead okay remember that that is going to change your management so the baby is dead the patient suddenly goes in where is my pen the patient suddenly goes in shock so difficult to see this pen this small dot patient suddenly goes in shock with cyanosis respiratory disturbances pulmonary edema okay the, what is the most likely diagnosis the baby is dead and she has strong labor pains what is the most likely diagnosis what is happening question number 11 rupture of the uterus do you think rupture of the uterus will do this but there is nothing suggesting that rupture would happen why would rupture yes strong labor pains may be suggestive of rupture but as such they haven't told you that it is a uh, maybe an elderly multi para might confuse you with the rupture so that is probably something which is confusing congestive heart failure there is nothing in the history they have written elderly just to confuse you amniotic fluid embolism and concealed accidental hemorrhage so actually these are very very close all of them are very very close so you will have all the answers c d c d here the answer is amniotic fluid embolism let me check what they have written in the explanation because even rupture can present like this because it's a strong contraction and she is a multi elderly multi para so multi paras they have a tendency of uh, rupturing the uterus and she can have respiratory disturbances because of hemorrhagic shock pulmonary edema but because everything is going more in favor of amniotic fluid embolism let me check what they have written here um in the question the female is multi para advanced maternal age elderly and the fetus is dead the patient is having strong contractions which is in favor of rupture which is in favor of amniotic fluid embolism and even concealed accidental hemorrhage now she suddenly goes in shock with cyanosis respiratory disturbances and pulmonary edema all these favor the diagnosis of amniotic fluid embolism which is characterized by an abrupt onset of respiratory distress and coagulopathy so it is basically the word the key word which is going to tell you the diagnosis here is suddenly okay because if i look at the question if i don't know the answer i will get confused it might be rupture or it might be even concealed hemorrhage so it is a sudden onset of everything which is giving you the answer of amniotic fluid embolism because ultimately rupture will also lead to shock concealed accidental hemorrhage will also lead to dic and shock okay so it is 11c because of the sudden onset she becomes cyanotic bronchospasm is there and cardiorespiratory arrest and everything is basically in favor of sudden death is usual all right so what are the risk factors for does rupture cause strong contractions in primary also see uh, strong contractions will lead to rupture 
rupture will not cause contractions contraction strong can lead to rupture maybe she had a mal presentation uh, even primies it is very rare for the primies to rupture but sometimes mal presentations and the uterus having maybe some anomaly maybe it was a bicornate uterus with one horn getting pregnant and it was not enough for the baby to uh, to move around and get a proper lie so probably it was a transverse lie shoulder presentation the baby died and because of these strong contractions it was a rupture uterus okay so anything can happen but it is the word suddenly that has basically got this diagnosis amniotic fluid embolism okay because rupture will take some time first it will rupture contractions will subside then because of hemorrhage the patient might slowly develop shock and then later maybe dic and cyanosis will come very late okay then the following tests are related to blood coagulation disorders in obstetrics except which condition will not give you blood coagulation disorders so they are asking except okay so tell me what is not in favor of blood coagulation disorders thrombocytopenia is a feature of fibrinolytic process and not of dic in our dic rbcs will be helmet shaped fragmented but in fibrinolytic uh, process the cell morphology is normal weiner clot observation test gives a rough estimate of total blood fibrinogen level uh, today in the evening in the special class i'll tell you everything about this thrombocytopenia can be diagnosed from the peripheral smear so which is not in favor of uh, which is not correct actually this is the last question guys because we are finishing with the 30 minutes that we have been given allotted thrombocytopenia is a feature of fibrinolytic process and not of dic D dic mein rbc is helmet shaped hote hain you need to know about DIC, you need to know about amniotic fluid embolism as well, okay? You have to tell me what is wrong. It is not D. Thrombocytopenia can be diagnosed from peripheral smear, which is right. How will you check that there will be less than 4 platelets in per high power field? So, less than 4 platelets per high power field is diagnostic and that is thrombocytopenia that you can see in the peripheral smear. The wrong answer is thrombocytopenia is a feature of fibrinolytic process not of DIC. Even in DIC there is consumption coagulopathy and there will be very low platelets and that is what is causing bleeding. Okay, So it is not just clotting. After clotting, after dissemination, uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation, all the coagulation factors especially uh, FDPs they increase and the platelets they really go down. That is why the patient bleeds everywhere from ears from nose it is a DIC total uh, consumption of the coagulation factors and the platelets okay so that's it guys see you in the evening at 7 p.m. for the quick revision of APH on the special free platform free class okay